नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन वी आर कंसिडरिंग द अध्यात्म प्रसाद एंड अध्यात्म प्रसाद है दैट ऑकर्स टू वन हु इज अकॉम्प्लिश्ड इन निर्विचारा समापत्ति यू शुड रिकॉल दैट अध्यात्म प्रसाद इज देयर फॉर एवरी वन ऑफ अस दोज आर ऑन द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ आध्यात्मिक पारमार्थिक पाथ हैव ग्रेटर अध्यात्म प्रसाद एंड अ योगी हु इज नाउ प्रोफिशियंट इन निर्विचारा समापत्ति वुड बी हैविंग एक्जाल्टेड अध्यात्म प्रसाद अध्यात्म प्रसाद फॉर बी कॉमनर्स वुड बी दैट बाय बीइंग ऑन द पाथ ऑफ धर्म परमार्थ एंड बीइंग सीकर्स ऑफ तत्व ज्ञान दर्शन परमार्थ साधक अवर अध्यात्म प्रसाद वुड बी ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ हैविंग ब्लेसड लाइफ ग्रेस्ड लाइफ द परमात्मा द भगवान द ग्रेस ऑफ भगवान वुड बी हैड फॉर पर्सन हु इज ऑन आध्यात्मिक पाथ सो आध्यात्मिक पाथ वुड गिव अध्यात्म प्रसाद ऑफ नेचर ऑफ सोलेस इन लाइफ एंड डिस्पाइट दी अप ही वुल्स कॉज बाय प्रारब्ध डेस्टिनी he would have super suspensions so the adhyatma prasada is there for anyone if you recall i said even those are atheists skeptics even they have adhyatma prasada just because of immanence of antaryami bhagwan within themselves so there is no way to say that when the divinity is indwelling us that we would not be graced the grace would be always there so in more or less degree it would be there even for atheist skeptic even profane they would be also having some grace this is just because of immanence of uh, parmatma within oneself the atma parmatma the glorious entities would definitely radiate glories so adhyatma prasad is there for any one and every one every being why humans even sub humans but then it would be of different degrees the bounties would be of different degrees to those who are on progressively higher planes of consciousness what in adhyatma we say evolved consciousness but what is being mentioned in the text is adhyatma prasad for a yogi who is accomplished in nirvichara samapatti in other words sampragnata samadhi so therefore the sutra is nirvichara vaisharadhyai adhyatma prasadah now in nirvichara samapatti there is what is called as sakshatkar for which there is no english word as i have been repeatedly saying it is intuitively mystically revelation of atita bhautiki tatvas metaphysical principles in the microcosm within oneself so atita bhautiki sakshatkar in the pindandam that is what is nirvichara samapatti is and uh, 
basically to be qualifying for samadhi and samapatti there are states such as vikata shoka jyotishpati pravrutti we have seen during chitta parikarma vishoka pravrutti jyotishpati pravrutti um and therefore that is the foundation of samapatti so the consciousness evolves it rises to towering heights what shri arbind called supra consciousness a supra conscious state and therefore there is that this prasada which is exalted basically the chitta is immaculately clear clean virgin if you recall the samapatti sutra the any kind of ashuddhi is um drained out of the chitta so there is that mala nevrutti chitta mala nevrutti and um, therefore the buddhi sattva would have exalted condition pure immaculate virgin condition and therefore it has that incredible antarmukhi and that antarmukhi is also of the nature of prashanta vahita there is a flow of tranquility cosmic tranquility and that is vaisharadyam this is what vyasa tells us that's the statement of vyasa and with this proficiency there is adhyatma prasada so let us look into vyasa's comment as it is ashuddhi avarna malape tasya प्रकाशात्मन बुद्धिसत्व रजतमोभ्या अनभिभूत स्वच्छ स्थिति प्रवाह वैशारद्यम सो ही डिफाइन्स व्हाट इज वैशारद्यम वी जनरली कॉल इट प्रोफिशियंसी प्रोफिशियंसी इन निर्विचारा समापत्ति इज व्हाट पतंजलि इज मेंशनिंग इन इज अफॉरिजम बट व्यास एक्सपाउंड्स ऑन इट एक्सपैंड्स ऑन इट so he says that uh, impurities of the nature of rajatama gunas which are enveloping the chitta that is broken through and that is uh, malapagamam avarna malape tasya is the expression of vyasa and then with that the luminous buddhi sattvam without any touch of rajatama gunas slightest taint even slightest taint of rajatama gunas is not there so it is nirmala so when it is nirmala buddhi sattva then it gets ekagrata pravah it gets a flow it's not just a state of mind it is a flow of tranquility flow of virginity transparency so it's a flow of pure buddhi sattva pure chitta and that flow is vaisharadyam so it's not just state of tranquility and virginity and cosmicality it's not just state it is a flow it's a flow and that is vaisharadyam then vyasa says yada nirvicharas nirvicharasya samadehe vaisharadyam idam jayate tada yogino bhavati adhyatma prasadah bhutharth vishaya karmanurodhi sphutah pragnya lokah so this prasada is of na- of the nature of gnanam 
is what is to be understood here. It is not just blessed state of mind. It is not just blessed state of consciousness. But it is Jnana Rupam. Sputa Pragnya Lokaha. It is lum- not only Jnana but luminosity of Jnana. And Sputa, absolutely clear. So he says when Nirvichara Samapatti is reaching the plane of Vaisharadhyam as explained in the earlier statement. Yogi gets Adhyatma Prasadaha. What is this Adhyatma Prasada? It is not just blessed state of mind or chitta, but Bhutartha Vishaya, Kramana Rodhi, Sputa Pragnya Lokaha. So, his knowledge, Apradhana, knowledge up to Apradhana, that means subtlest Prakriti, primordial Prakriti to Purusha, Atma, Paramatma, Ishwara, Purusha Vishesha, all these metaphysical uh, things or metaphysical principles rather, the knowledge with respect to them is absolutely sputa, that means absolutely crystal clear. And that too, without kramanurodham. That means, yugapat, simultaneous, in one stroke, there is that knowledge. Our knowledge has a krama. Our knowledge will flow towards potential state of an object or uh, the latent state of the object. So our knowledge is always in the framework of time. Past and future will be always touching our knowledge. Our knowledge is not untouched by anything of the past or anything of the future. So there is always touch of that which is not actual. Either it is potential or it is latent. So our knowledge is always like that. Our worldly knowledge is always like that. There is some touch of previous states or subsequent states. That's the limitation of our empirical knowledge. It is worth taking note of. Our knowledge is not without any touch or influence of, um, if I may say so, pastistic knowledge. Past. Like they were, we have the word futuristic. We don't have the word pastistic. But our knowledge is always having some origin or source or at least touch and influence of something that is gone by with respect to object at sight or object of knowledge, the content of knowledge. There is always a touch of past and there is always a touch of future. So there is a krama, there is a sequential order. And here it is without that. So that means it is simultaneous in one stroke. To give you an example, when you see the rose, we see the rose as it is. Our knowledge doesn't consist of knowledge about about the same rose, that it would be tomorrow. Its tomorrow's form is not included in our knowledge, nor yesterday's form is included in our knowledge. Our knowledge only includes the rose as it is. So, there is no simultaneity of the gone by conditions and oncoming conditions about the object of our knowledge. But here, it is when it is said to be um, simultaneous 
it's a unique condition it doesn't happen to empirical form of knowledge empirical tool of knowledge it only happens in samadhi pragnya that you will have knowledge at in at one stroke at one stroke you will have complete knowledge about how the rose was before it became a rose flower that has come to our sight in front of us and what the rose would be prospectively in a futuristic time that it would become rotten then it would become uh sand as to what would because something would have happen to rose even if you have fresh rose tomorrow uh, today in front of your vision something is going to happen to that rose tomorrow so finally it is going to become earth it is going to become sand and then of course rose has come from previous states of being in a bud before it blossomed it was in a bud budded condition before that something else before that it was plant before that it was seed so there are so many states of that rose which is at sight in the realm of the past and in the realm of the future and we don't have simultaneous knowledge of all this but, but here in intuitive mystic process of samadhi it is simultaneous and that is why uh, kramanurodhi is a expression used by vyasa so that's the unique kind of knowledge and that is the prasad that is the prasad the knowledge is the prasad the gnana is the prasad it should not be knowledge it is gnanam gnanam of uh the paramarthic gnana about any object that comes to mind in samadhi so this is what vyasa explains it that it is a process of knowledge it is a manifestation of the form of knowledge pragnya lokaha it is knowledge and not just quiet state of mind bliss no blessed state of mind bliss etc we that is what we imagine yogi is a bliss but it is his gnanam so vyasa makes this clear which we would, we would never imagine we would think that it is only placid quiet serene noble blessed state of mind and uh, blissful state of mind etc this would be what our imagination would be about adhyatma prasad but that is there but that, that is not all so vyasa has cleared it in the statement that we just now considered so how is this yogi he explains pragnya prasad maru ye ashoch shochato janan bhumishthani vashailasta sarvan pragnyo anupashyati the yogi as if mounted on a tall tall ta- tower of wisdom we can only get on top of a tower which is a steel structure or a concrete structure we can be on the hill top we can be on a tower top we can be on the top of a skyscraper that's all we can be getting it and from there we have seen how we get the vision in previous session dealing with this topic having got onto the top of the tower how is your vision we have equal vision the horizon extends enormously but here the yogi is mounted on pragnya pra- prasadam he is mounted on pragnya prasad and then uh, this sorrowless yogi the sorrowless yogi is looking at all those beings who are submerged in sorrow and he looks at them in a shailastha drushti that means mountain top vision so that is what vyasa is describing the vaisharadyam 
mentioned by Patanjali. Now, is this all? No. There is further more description of this Adhyatma Prasada. So, Vyasa tells, uh, Patanjali tells us, Rudambhara Tatra Pragnya. There, in such a state, in that Vaisharadhyam and that Adhyatma Prasadam, there is Rutambhara Pragnya. So this is what is Adhyatma Prasad, which is now being opened out for us to understand. So Rutambhara Pragnya, the yogi's Pragnya is called Rutambhara. And Rutam, you should recall, is another dimension of truth. And perhaps the essential dimension of truth. Not a relative truth, but absolute truth. His, his intelligence or his chitta is fully packed by Rutambhara Pragnya. The preliminary expression of Rutambhara Pragnya would be Satyambhara Pragnya. Charged with truth. Satyambhara. Charged with truth and reality. So, his mind, his chitta, his consciousness is now charged with Rutambhara Pragnya. So that is another dimension of Adhyatma Prasada. Rather, the, that, the dimension that it is of the nature of Gnanam is now being opened out. What kind of Gnana? It is Rutambhara Pragnya. Satyam Bhara Pragnya. So this prasada is called Rutam Bhara Pragnya. This is how we have to start understanding it. That Adhyatma Prasada is called Rutam Bhara Pragnya, which happens to a nirvichara, accomplished yogi. Our Adhyatma Prasada is not Rutam Bhara Pragnya. As I said, there are so many degrees of Adhyatma Prasada. Adhyatma Prasada is for one and all. So our Adhyatma Prasada is not of the nature of Rutambhara Pragnya. But in Nirvichara Samapati, Yogi gets Rutambhara Pragnya, which is uh, truth-bearing consciousness. Absolute truth-bearing consciousness. Ultimate truth-bearing consciousness. So this intelligence or this pragna uh, is different than Shruta Anumana Pragnya because this truth is not matter of our perception. We won't be perceiving the this truth which is spoken of in philosophy. This truth is derived by us by Agama by Upanishads, by Shastras, by Guru Upadesha, by Shastra Upadesha. So Shastras will tell us about this truth. This truth is not object of our senses. And therefore Vyasa makes it clear that this is different than Shruta Anumana Pragnya. Or secondly there is Anumana. We can infer our knowledge about the self, metaphysical self, is rooted in Agama because the Upanishads tell us about Avyakto Ayam, Avikaro Ayam, etc. That it is immutable, it is Avyakta, it is birthless, it is deathless, it is sorrowless, etc. So the Shastras have told us this. And then, of course, we have some inference about it that this is how the Atma would ease that it doesn't have caste, class, creed, gender, status, stature, etc. This is, a, this is inference. We can also infer about it. Having had some input from Agamas, having had input from Shastras, having uh, had in, uh, input from Upanishads, Gita, Purana Shastra, Moksha Shastra, etc. So our knowledge about this ultimate truth, absolute truth would be based on Shruta Anumana Pragnya. 
So Vyasa clearly says it is different than this because he will have experienced these realities in his intuitive mystic state of samadhi. So yogi has experience of truth and we have knowledge of truth. We have knowledge of truth based on Shruta Anumana Pragnya. Our knowledge is based on what Shastras tell us, what Upanishads tell us, what Vedanta tells us, what Agamas tell us, what Darshan Shastras tell us. So we have knowledge from coming from this source, which is Shastra, Shastra Praman, Agama Praman. And then of course there is inference based on it. But Yogi is is different than this. So this Rutambara, Rutambara Pragna is standing out in comparison with our knowledge about metaphysics. We will also have knowledge of metaphysics. By looking into Sankhya, Vedanta, Bhagavad Gita, we will have some knowledge of metaphysics. But that will be by Shruta Anumana Pragna. And this is Rutambara Pragna. It is totally bhinna, it is totally different, is what Vyasa clearly mentions in his commentary. So, that is the Adhyatma Prasada. His knowledge in the sense, Gudha Gnanam, very mysterious knowledge, which has come through his Samadhi Pragnya stands out and that is the that is the adhyatma prasada of a yogi so that is what he says in the sutra um, 1.49 so rutambhara pragnya the sutra rutambhara tatra pragnya is 1.48 and that Pragna has been explained just now with example of um, the Shruta Anumana Pragna and this Pragna. So Vyasa has quoted there Agamena Anumanena Dhyana Bhyasara Senacha Tridha Prakalpayan Pragnam Labhate Yogam Uttamam. So he quotes from shastras that vyasa had uh, ha- vyasa had had in his uh, studies agama anumana and dhyana abhyasa so these are three kinds of knowledge processes you can get gnana by shruta gnana that is anumita gnana anumana gnana or anumana anumita gnana or dhyana abhyasam that is the yogic process of getting knowledge. And he has all the three. Not that yogi has only experiential knowledge of metaphysical principles, but he also has Agama Gnana and then Arumita Gnana and it is topped up by Dhana Abhyasa. And yogi by all these three kinds of knowledges, for we have only two. Howsoever we might evolve in our spiritual pursuit, we have only two, that is Agama and Anumana. But here, Dhyana Abhyasa means actual Yoga Pratyaksha, by Yoga Pratyaksha, so he has Tridha, knowledge of three, threefold, because we don't have any Pratyaksha about Atma, Pratyaksha about Paramatma, Pratyaksha about subtle principles of universe, cosmic principles, of buddhi tattva, ahankar tattva, buddhi tattva, uh, prakriti tattva, purusha tattva. We don't have direct perception of it. Yogi has it because of nirvichara samapatti, because of the grahya grahana grahitru as supports of his samadhi. He has uh, yoga ja pratyaksha of these entities. And he says by tridha, by threefold knowledge, he attains supreme gati. He attains the supreme by threefold jnana. It's not that he has only 
ಯೋಗಜ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಆಗಮೇನ ಅನುಮಾನೇನ ಧ್ಯಾನಾಭ್ಯಾಸ ರಸೇನ ಚ ತ್ರಿಧಾ ಪ್ರಕಲ್ಪ ಎನ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಲಭತೆ ಯೋಗಮ ಉತ್ತಮ ಹಿಸ್ ಯೋಗ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಥ್ರೀ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟೂ ಫೋಲ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ತರ್ಡ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ವೇರ್ ಎಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಥ್ರೀ ಚಾನಲ್ಸ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ಸ್ ವೈಟ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಋತಂಭರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ವ್ಯಾಸ then patanjali explains as i said just now uh, with a sutra which comes um, at 1.49 so the sutra is shruta anumana pragnya abhyam anya vishaya visheshartatvat is what patanjali tells us shruta anumana pragnya abhyam anya vishaya so this is the object of knowledge is different than shruta gnana anumita gnana and vishesha arthatva the specific of all those subtle metaphysical principles the specifics become object of knowledge not the generics but the specifics so vish the so shruta anumana pragnya abhyam anya vishaya so basically it is different category of knowledge by dhyana abhyasa and then it is for particulars of that objects of knowledge and not generics so patanjali himself has made it clear in the uh, sutra which says shruta anumana pragnya abhyam anya vishaya visheshartatvat that is the sutra 1.49 and uh, so it is a unique realm of knowledge plane of knowledge then qualitatively it is unique no knowledge will come to match this kind of knowledge um and we saw byasa told us that it is uh, uh, three aspects of knowledge there shruta gnana is already there anumita gnana is already there and this is of a yogi and then dhyana abhyasa so that is how the uh, rutambara pragnya has been further opened out so it is pragnya roopam this is important to be thing to be understood it is pragnya prasada this is to be understood and not be in our imagination that is some kind of bliss enormous kind of bliss infinitude of bliss etc which is our imagination that yogi is uh, in a blissful state or blessed state of mind and uh, in this sutra 1.49 vyasa clears ಶ್ರುತ ಅನು ಆಗಮ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ತತ್ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ವಿಷಯ ದ ಶ್ರುತ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಥ್ರೂ ಆಗಮಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉಪನಿಷಸ್ ವಿ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಆಗಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದ ದೀಸ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೇಚರ್ ದ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ವಿಷಯ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ of all these principles the generics of all this principle and not the specifics nahi aage mana aagamena shaktyo vishesha abhidhatum and you cannot be really getting the specifics of these principles and what is the specifics of and generics of principles they you should recall while dealing with epistemology we dealt with it the fire the fire the flame can be seen so that is a vishesha gnana samanya gnana is that which comes in inference that there is fire on the mountain you don't see the flame you see the smoke but you deduce that there is fire on the mountain because there is smoke so vishesha gnana means the particulars of object are grasped 
द कलर फॉर्म डायमेंशन एट्सेट्रा और द शब्द स्पर्श रूप और सगंध ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट दे आर परसीव दैट इज विशेष ज्ञानम सो विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एम्पेरिकल ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड सेंसरी ऑब्जेक्ट्स वी ग्रास्प द पर्टिकुलर्स बट देन इफ यू आर दे आर सटल एंड वेल्ड रिमोट देन इट इज जेनेरिक्स so our knowledge is usually with reference to particulars when it is pratyaksham and when it is not pratyaksham then it is knowledge with reference to generics so the point is that by shruta anumana gnana whatever knowledge we are going to get in the realm of metaphysics would be would be samanya roopam samanya swaroopam nahi aagamena shakyo vishesh अभिधा द आगम ज्ञान कैन नॉट गिव यू द पर्टिकुलर्स ऑफ दीज प्रिंसिपल्स कस्मा न हि विशेषेण कृतसंकेत शब्द बिकॉज यू विल बी गेटिंग द नॉलेज बाय शब्द संकेत यू विल गेट वर्बल नॉलेज आगम मीन्स यू गेट नॉलेज बेस्ड ऑन वर्ड्स एंड द वर्ड्स कैन नॉट गिव यू जेनर स्पेसिफिक्स of an object if i tell you sugar is sweet and jaggery is sweet you are not going to know, get the knowledge of sweetness unless you take it on your tongue so shabda sanketa whatever is verbally described you will never get the particulars of the object uh, uh, particulars about that object of knowledge so you have to taste sugar you have to taste jaggery then you will know what is the sweetness of sugar and what is the sweetness of jaggery or what is the sweetness of honey and that will only give you experience of particularities of sweetness but in agama you are just going to get verbal knowledge so verbal knowledge what is called a shabda sanketa the words are not capable of describing the vishesha they are only capable of describing samanya and therefore our knowledge of metaphysics is of the samanya roopam so also is the case of anumanam so also is the case of inference you don't see the fire over the mountain yet you say it is fire on the mountain and it is valid what you have cited is um dhumbram what you have cited is fume so that is not what the fire is water is uh, the fire is not fume but what fire is fire luminous it has its color it has its shape it has its form etc we know what the flame is so anumanam also will not give us specifics about knowledge it will only give generics of knowledge um so that's how in the epistemology we have considered the generics and specifics therefore he said anuman anumane chatu samanyana upasamvaraha inference or inferential knowledge also will end with generics it will get exhausted at generics and not at all uh, reach the specifics so agama gnana about metaphysics can never be mentioning about particulars and what can not get knowledge of particulars but only specifics and particularly when the metaphysical principles are sukshma subtle vyavahita veiled or remote durastha the laukika pratyaksha will not be coming in there it has to be yoga ja pratyaksha and not uh, laukika pratyaksha but whereas here yogi has the pratyakshi karanam of all these principles which are not at all objects of worldly pratyaksha worldly perceptions and he gets it in his samadhi pragnya that is the spe- uh, speciality typicality of this pragnya um so that is how this rutambhara pragnya is 
तस्मा श्रुत अनुमान प्रज्ञाभ्याम अन्य विषया सा प्रज्ञा विशेष अर्थत्वात इति दैट इज व्हाई ही ओपन्स आउट व्हाट द फॉरेस्ट इज टेलिंग अस इन दिस सूत्र ओके सो दिस इज ऑल नॉलेज प्रोसेस सो फार व्हाट वी आर सीन इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ प्रज्ञा ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ एक्झाल्टेड नॉलेज बट इज दॅट ऑल आज अध्यात्म प्रसाद नॉट एट ऑल वॉट मॉर तज्ज संस्कारो अन्य संस्कार प्रतिबंधी सो धीज आर धीज दिस इज एक्सपीरिय एक्सपीरियन्स इंट्युटिवली मिस्टेक एक्सपीरियन्स विच इज नॉट जस्ट कंडिशन दॅट आय नो वॉट आय नेवर नोन ऑर नो बडी कॅन नो इट्स नॉट दॅट आय नो दिस दॅट नो कॉमन मॅन वील नो इट आय नो इट इट्स नॉट दॅट आय नो द गॉड आय नो द आत्मा आय नो द परमात्मा विच नो वन अदरवाईज नोज इट इट्स नॉट जस्ट नॉलेज it generates samskars and these samskars are such that they will destroy the other samskaras and samskara shuddhi is so important in yoga so we may we must get rid of not vrittis we have to get rid of samskaras for finality of yoga just chitta vritti nirodham will not give you finality so samskaras we have, there is a condition such as samskaras should be restrained we have so many potentials and subliminal impressions as called in english which is not a proper uh, description in my view so these samskaras which are antagonizing to yoga not complementing to yoga not useful to yoga should be destroyed they should be destroyed if they are not destroyed they are going to come up at some point in time so these new samskaras will be countering the those samskaras which are not conducive to yoga which are unyogic samskaras non yogic samskaras they will be doing pratibandham so the new samskaras come out of this rutambhara pragnya it's not just pragnya but it sprouts samskars it generates new samskars and these new samskars are such that old samskars will go away like when the sun is rising in the sky the stars disappear so when this pragnya the sun of pragnya rises they all will disappear and they will disappear they should disappear and then progressively by this samadhi pragnya he goes on getting sampragnya after sampragnya asampragnya after asampragnya samadhi goes on getting it's not just once he gets samadhi that it is accomplished so in every samadhi actualization of samadhi the samskars will be going away when the new samadhi comes up even the sama- samskars of the previous samadhi need to go they are replaced so they will go away so that's how purification of samskars will take place progressively so at the first state stage unyogic samskars are shown a way out and then yogic samskars are coming but then there is a built up of yoga samskars but the new and evolved samskars will set aside old samskars which are not unyogic they are they are yogic samskars but then the filtration or purification will take place samskara purification samskara shuddhi so this will go on taking place with a very samadhi the yogic sama yogic samskaras of inferior quality will go away they will be replaced by superior samskaras with onset of a very new samadhi so this will continue continue and continue until you come to final samskar ultimate samskar now when that is restrained nothing is set aside it itself is restrained and that is moksham that is nirvanam so what we have to understand here there is a progressive purification of not only chitta but chitta samskars initially unyogic samskars will be weeded out then yogic samskars will be built up but yogic samskars when they built up the new yogic samskar will replace will cancel the old yogic samskars 
and that's how the purification process will be on finally there will be last samskar that will be coming up with which is not capable or there is no need it to be replacing some old samskars now therefore when that itself is restrained that is kaivalya that is moksha that is nirvana so adhyatma prasada will take yogi until the final state of yoga which is called kaivalyam and this is what the first chapter is telling us so tajya samskaro anya samskara pratibandhi pragna samskars are progressively evolved qualitatively evolved and when a qualitatively superior samskar comes up the inferior yogic samskar is set aside or is cancelled and that's how samskar purification takes place and the finality of it will be in samam bonam spiritual samam bonam called kaivalya therefore it says tasya api narode sarva nirodha api nirbija samadhi then he gets nirbija samadhi which is not a seed for anything it is seedless it doesn't have seed it doesn't germinate seed and therefore since there is no germination of seed then that is kaivalyam that is moksham that is nirvanam so this is the culminative phase of adhyatma prasada in the 51st sutra of samadhi pada so with that the chitta prasadam topic comes to an end started perhaps in 1.47 47 48 49 50 51 so these many sutras are dedicated to adhyatma prasadaha or adhyatma prasadam so with this the first chapter comes to an end samadhi pada comes to an end and it ends with spiritual samam bonam called kaivalyam ultimate state of yoga so with that we will be ending this session with this we will have ended samadhi pada delineation and now we will be embarking upon the second pada second chapter of yoga sutras which is sadhana pada so namaskar all of you